Today we will explain a common phenomenon in evolution known as Batesian mimicry. Batesian mimicry involves a harmless species mimicking the behavior or appearance of a harmful or poisonous species in order to protect itself from predators. Mimicry serves to protect the mimic from its predators or to deceive its prey. It occurs in plants and animals, but today we will focus on butterflies. The name Batesian mimicry comes from the British naturalist Henry Walter Bates, who discovered the pheno phenomenon along with Alfred Russell Wallace in 1848. He explored, studied, and collected thousands of, thousands of insects for 11 years in the Amazon basin, and his new discoveries were sent back to museums in Europe. During his expedition in the Amazon, Charles Darwin, along with Wallace, released their theory on evolution by natural selection to the public, and Walter Bates was quick to embrace it. His discovery of platable butterflies mimicking the appearance of poisonous ones was, in Bates' eyes, the most powerful proof of the theory of natural selection. <laughs> These mimicking butterflies were also the first independent evidence to Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection, which holds that organisms best able to meet challenges in their environment survive to produce the most offspring, so their traits become increasingly common throughout, throughout generations. <laughs> in this case, the mimicking species has now gained a selective advantage by increasing its chances of survival since predators will now attack them less frequently due to the fact that they look poisonous. Mimicry is controlled with a supergene, also known as a Hox gene. A supergene is a small region on a chromosome comprised of a group of neighboring genes that are locked together in a functionally related unit. A supergene preserves favorable gene combinations in the population while preventing non-mimetic genes from arising. This phenomenon is known as convergent evolution as both similar species of butterflies converge to have the same appearance because that appearance is what gives the butterfly the best chance of survival. We will show you now how something like this may happen over time when you start out with two completely different looking butterflies, with one being poisonous while the other is not. We will start out here in the Amazon rainforest with poisonous Pam and her family of yellow butterflies flying along and inhabiting the same area as edible Eric and his family of red butterflies. Both families have to be on the lookout for birds, as a butterfly makes a tasty meal for any bird flying through the area. <laughs> Unfortunately, Buster the bird comes flying th through the area, ready to eat whatever butterfly comes across his path first. Buster the bird, not knowing which species of butterfly is poisonous or not, goes with the easiest catch, and this happens to be poisonous Pam. A few minutes go by, and Buster the bird is puking up his meal and regretting his decision to go with the yellow butterfly. He has now learned to stay away from Poisonous Pam and her family of yellow butterflies. Now the next day, Buster the bird comes by and is hungry again, and he decides to try one of the red butterflies, and to his delight, it was delicious. The bird no now knows to stay away from the yellow butterflies and to only eat the red ones. Over time, the yellow butterflies continue to live on and maintain their population of five because the birds know to stay away from the color yellow, while the red butterflies are now not as lucky and only down to a population of three. Now this is where Darwin's theory of natural selection comes into play, as it states that individual organisms change over time by doing whatever is necessary to increase their chances of survival. In this case, it would be beneficial for the red species of butterflies to gradually evolve a lighter colored appearance, so that birds may confuse them for poisonous lighter colored yellow butterflies. The poisonous yellow butterflies are known as the model, while the edible red ones have an incentive to be the mimic. Say there is a mutation in the family of red butterflies, <clears throat> and it causes one to be the color orange. Considering Buster the bird already knows to stay away from the color yellow and the red ones are tasty, he comes flying through again and eats another red one but leaves the orange guy alone. The gene that codes for the orange color will continue to get passed down as it gives the palatable species a greater chance of survival, since they look now more similar to the poisonous yellow butterflies. Buster the bird still has not tried an orange one, but now since they are plentiful in the population, he decides to eat one, and once again it has served his appetite. So as natural selection suggests, the orange butterfly will continue to converge to a brighter color. Now say there is another mutation in the palatable orange butterflies, and this time it causes one to turn yellow. Plus the bird already, already has it ingrained in his head that yellow butterflies are poisonous. Therefore, the gene that is now causing the edible orange ones to turn yellow is advantageous to its survival. Eventually, after thousands and thousands of years pass, the entire population of palatable butterflies will evolve the color yellow since being this color greatly increases its chances for, of survival. This is what Batesian mimicry is. Over time, a harmless species has an incentive to mimic the appearance of a harmful or poisonous species, since predators have learned over time to stay away from that harmful one.